Yes. That, that's you. Get ready. Uh, he wrote me an email asking me to come up. He referred to me as professor, which I always think is very nice, but it's not true. I'm not a professor. I just play one on TV. Uh, so uh, we're going to bring him up here. Uh, so please give a warm welcome to Bart. I'm just calling Bart. Come on up. Hi, I'm a little midget kind of guy. Hi, I'm Bart, and I'm also an alcoholic. Um, all right, so everybody been... Is it good? You hear me good? Like, here, like that? All right, so everybody been telling, like, funny stories and stuff. And I love them. Yeah, they were all, like, really funny. I was laughing my ass off, like, down there. Um, yeah, but I'm more like a horror type of guy. I know some people hate horrors, but I do love it. So, yeah, I only had, like, one day to write it. It's just, like... Something little, 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 something that may evolve into something else, may not. I haven't decided yet. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, I thought it was going to be, like, really scary, but after what my professor slash doctor just told about the nipple story, I think it's not going to be, like, that terrible. <laughs> but anyway, here it goes. It's called Shell B67. That's the most beautiful car in the world, if you haven't known that yet. <clears throat> Musty smelling interior of his dad's. May he rest in peace, 67 Shelby, reminding him of the good times. Times where his only problem was if the school had the regular chocolate flavor milk. Good old times where the crucial numbers were not the digits in his bank account, but the number of paving blocks between his school and his favorite parking lot just aside the woods, where 428 horses under the hood were now dimly displaying their power in a dormant, uneven symphony. The inside smell of Dan leather seat cigarette butts in his own cologne, the smell of his father's car, the reassuring smell of inevitable nostalgia for the man who always knew what was right, who always had a plan, the go-to man. He caught himself clenching his fist around the slim wood steering wheel. His girl was just beside him, sitting in the bucket seat with her head against the window, her stocking still and fixed. Making love to that girl was something equally fulfilling because he'd always wanted her so badly and contenting since she more than anyone or anything in the funny little world was making him truly happy. He noticed that his proud silver belt buckle was still unfixed as well. Look at all that mess, babes, he said out loud smiling at her 19 year old face. He buckled himself up, he wasn't sure if they were going to do it again. Three times we lowered your lot. At least that's what he thought and heard. How would he know? It was his first time anyway. Mustang's engine murmured low, a quiet observer of all the aggression and all the passion, the only witness to this act of beauty. The dream girl in the dream car, the grown man's dream, isn't it? He giggled. Both so compatible with each other, both so alike, both beautiful in their own way, both neat and obviously gorgeous, each a character, moody sometimes, but fervorous when needed, although different in displaying it, both short tempered. Two magnificent godly creatures who he loved from the very first sight. His first love, and now 33-year-old display of an American muscle at its best, and his first true love, a smooth, fresh out of high school prom princess, 19-year-old display of American beauty, who he would stillfully observe from behind of the school top floor blindles, blinders. While she was approaching her boyfriend's jacks, this piece of shit jacks, this scumbag fucking Jack Reynolds fucking car, you go to hell, you white trash pizza. Calm yourself down, Andy. It's all in the past now. He quickly rejected the upcoming anger as easy as he's been doing it for the past two decades. Whenever his parents decided that the best thing to do in front of um in front of their only son was to haggle whether it was mom or daddy's fault for fucking up their child, which eventually always evolved into blaming each other of whose parents were responsible for donating the handicapped genes onto their lovely grandson. Your mother was always a cruel bitch, you know that, Karen? His pops used to say, Oh yeah, well maybe if your papa wouldn't be smart enough not to kick his pregnant wife's ass, you wouldn't come out such a shit, Don. It was all in the past now. She wasn't, though. She was real. As real as it gets. With the thick, fair brown hair tangled in a messy braid, young innocent face on top of a model-like body, pureness, sweetness, and sexiness. If it wasn't for, this, for his human limitations, he would not get off her. He would not let that lower letter scared go. He simply couldn't. You cannot just let go of that which you wanted to have your whole teenage life, right? He couldn't. You can, he thought. You can, he whispered, staring unseeingly into the light-filled mist. He looked at her, as pretty as she left her. She kissed her. He kissed her, slightly burning, blurring her still vivid deep red lipstick. Lips so soft, so kissable, still even two hours after her death. Thank you. Thank you. That was mine. Uh, 
I got a little stressed here. Sorry. Next time, I promise I'm gonna have something a little bit more funny. This is my first time. I know you boys probably hear that a lot, but this time it's not bullshit. 